Hello, this is Cameron. I'm going to uh, present how to build a Rust GT, uh, GNOME toolkit app and distribute it via Flatback. So uh, it's a way to Flatbacks are a way to distribute Linux desktop applications. Uh, they're quickly becoming the uh, de facto choice for Linux desktop applications versus Snap or versus AppImage or several other um, attempts. It's a sandbox environment just like Android or Docker and similar to, and it's, but it's mainly just for desktop applications. Uh, there's no central app store. It's distributed. Um, you can actually distribute it on Amazon S3 or any other web server. It's been called uh, the Git for binaries. So, uh, and it's secured with uh, GPG. So there's a project out there called GTKRS, and it has um, it has a bunch of examples that I've bundled up and, and distributed as a flat pack. And it's a demo time, so I have a Fedora 26 workstation <clears throat> that I'm going to start up and show you the, the demo that I built. If you don't already have Flatpak installed, you can just, uh, it's very easy to install. Um, this is a Flatpak. Here are all the various user features, developer features. But if you need to get it, uh, here's a list of all the various Linux distributions that support and how to install it on each one of them. And here's a list of uh, applications that are already distributed via Flatpaks. You can also install them via the command line. So this is what I'm going to demonstrate with this example. So while uh, Fedora is still booting, uh, this is how you, ins you, you can install a Flatpak directly from a Flatpak reference file. You can also list the installed Flatpaks. And you can run a particular Flatpak application. You can also um, shell into it, just like Docker, where you can then run other executables uh, that are inside of the sandbox image. So this is what I would do to install Flatpak, but it's uh, it should already be in, it should already be installed. Yep, Flatpak uh, 095 is already installed, so we'll go ahead and install this guy.
So it's asking if uh, I want to install the dependency, which is num. And this downloads. Actually, that was the repository for GNOME, and this is the actual 322 binary. So this, this dependency uh, for the GNOME runtime is 183 megs. And while that's going, I will, while that's installing, I'll go through the rest of the slides. So once that's installed, uh, I should be able to do Flatpak list and see that the app is installed and run Flatpak run in order to run the application. So Flatpak, uh, there's two different modes. One is system and user. By default, system, system requires uh, administrator privileges, usually sudo to install. Uh, so Flatpak list shows the list of installed applications and I'll say whether it's uh, system or user. There's two different config files um, for each one of the modes and each has a list of configured remote repositories as well as configuration options. So system is the default mode. The config file is uh, in general var lib flatpak repo config and for user it's in your home directory under dot local share flatpak repo config. Uh, there's details for the file system layout uh, on, the, on their wiki, as well as the documentation is quite good. So Flatpak ref is a reference. It's a, a link to basically an OS tree folder um, that's hosted. So this uh, link actually is the link to links to this folder. So this file, this file is this this information right here and it essentially links to the OS tree that I've synced or I've published in, in uh, Amazon. When I publish, uh, I secure it with, uh, I sign it with the, all of the files with the GPG key. Um, I generate a 4K key and I set it to be, that key to be valid for the rest of 2017, five months. You can get the ID uh, by running list keys uh, long, and here is uh, the ID that I'm, the public key ID that I'm using to sign everything with. So I set that ID, and then I exported the the public key, and then I can wrap the public key in Base64 and append that to the flat, flat pack ref in order to publish it. So I'm currently in Sofia and at a co-working space and uh, it's going to take a little while to download the GNOME uh, example. Once that's installed, uh, the rest of the updates or uh, other applications that require that runtime are, are installed much quicker. So the OS tree folders, I generally use one for local development and then one for publishing. So for local development, the workflow is you uh, build the Rust, build and test the Rust app, and then you then then I export it to a local repository um, that that's not using, and I install, I add that local repository. Uh, I'm not signing it with uh, PG or GPG, or at least I wasn't at first. Um, and then you can run the app. And then to uh, to update it, you build it. You basically export it again to the repo to the uh, OS tree and tell Flatpak to update it and run it again. So that's sort of the, the iterat iterative development for developing a. Uh, application or a flat pack. And then once that's ready and you've got you've got it where you want it and you want to publish a version, you can export it. I created a uh, 
just a flat pack folder in my home directory uh, that I'm syncing with Amazon. So this is the command that I was doing that with, where I'm actually signing it using that that uh, that public key. Or I'm signing it with my private key, but that's that's the identifier for the public key. And um, and then this is the command that I'm using to sync that OS tree folder uh, to Amazon. So uh, and I'm making it public. Uh, there's some additional links in getting started information for the for the Amazon command line, configuring it, and uh, in case you screw up, deleting everything. The uh, target flat pack. Um, it's basically I'm I'm creating that. It's simply creating the directory structure, putting the binaries in that structure, and then adding some metadata. So I added a flat pack script that you can get in the Git repo, and this is what it looks like. It's doing a cargo build. It's creating the bin directory that Flatpak expects. It's creating the export directory, even though there's nothing in it. It's required. And then I'm copying the binaries to the bin directory. And then I'm also copying the metadata. And the metadata looks like this. It's um, just got the name of the application. The runtime for its dependency. Okay, it's finally installed. No. It's grabbed the metadata for my application. It's now downloading the files for the application out of Amazon S3. And back to the presentation. So, this I copied directly out of the metadata getting started guide, and it allows basically access to the uh, X, basically just the X11 to the display so that the UI works. All right, so back to the demo. <laughs> So a flat pack list is going to show that in system uh, the the known platform 322 is installed as well as the app that we just created, and we can then run that. So this app was built a little bit bigger than the uh, width of the screen, but you still get the idea. It's the same GTK application. It's got all the various controls and buttons, uh, check buttons, and you can launch the browser. You can launch modals, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I did launch the browser. I'm going to go ahead and close this, but it worked. and all your various other widgets. So that is a application distributed via Flatback. You can also run the other examples. So <clears throat> if we, just like Docker or other uh, sandbox environments, you can actually enter shell. And by default, and we can CD into the app bin And you can see, by default, it was running the GTK, GTK test application, but you can run the other applications as well. Uh, we'll do the basic. And that's just going to do your basic uh, example. And the other one that I like doing is the multi-window. So
And you can even run the Cairo test. Just pop this open some graphics. And we can exit out of the sandbox environment. There you have it. That's an example of using Flatback. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. A little bit about me. Um, that's my blog, that's my Twitter account. I'm currently traveling the world with Remote Year and I am looking for a job. It, you can reach me at LinkedIn there. Thank you. Bye.